So Solar 3.0 is finally here, and has received a mixed reception from what I've seen. Now I've managed to lay my hands on it and explore what most new aspects and fragments offer, and I can tell you, if you have a creative mind you'll be able to create some pretty powerful fun end game builds around it. So while I have your attention, let's explore one of Zotted that has benefited the most from the update, which is Sunbracers. With the new update, Sunbracers have become even more better than ever before, and this build I have for you to show will allow you to rain unlimited amount of grenades, endless wells, increased damage, and just silly fun all around. But you know what else is hot, sticky, and goes all over the place if not taken care of? This channel right here. So if you enjoyed the video, then I would really appreciate a like, a sub, and for you to turn on your notification as it goes a long way for me. So for the subclass, we'll be using Daybreak as that's kind of the only option we have. Now the whole solar subclass has been massively overhauled, and it's not bad, but the aspects could be better. Anyways, here's what you want to aim for. For aspects, you want to have Touch of Flame, where solar grenades last longer and emit blobs of lava around the perimeter. You'll then want Heat Rises, where you can half in the air for longer and glide. This aspect will also grant us melee energy as well, so this will link into how some bases work. For Fragments, you want Ember of Torches, where power melee hits against combatants make you and your allies radiant. Ember of Blistering, where defeating combatants with solar ignition grants grenade energy. Ember of Wonder, where rapidly defeating targets with solar ignition generates orbs of power. And Ember of Searing, where scorched targets grant melee energy back. This here is how you want to play the build out, as both melee and grenades will heavily dictate how often you're able to use your sunbraces as a whole. You can customize the fragments if you wish, but this would be down to you, as what's shown here is the best to offer. For stats, you want 18 discipline and 17 strength. Although strength is mainly going to be doing the work here, you want to at least have the option available to use your grenade in case you use your melee against a combatant that is a lot tougher to take out. This should help you get your energy back in case of mistakes. Now for mods, you want battle for worlds for double worlds in return, elemental ordnance for creating worlds with your grenades, World of Life for increased health regen for a few seconds, Elemental Charge for becoming charged with light via walls collected, and Heavy Handed for regaining a half your mini back when charged with light. To put the build in simple terms, you'll never run out of melee as long as you net a single kill at all times. The idea of the build is to make sure that some places prop constantly without the need of ability based perks to increase its cooldown. With the following, we can at all times net a kill, produce ample amount of grenades on demand, get energy back, and repeat infinitely. And the great thing about this is that that's it. You don't need anything more than that. Heck, you could take off heavy handed and still do the same effect with little effort involved. You can do so much with this that in many ways it can be useful for end game, to a degree of course. For weapons, we have the Deliverance Fusion Rifle with steady hands and bait switch. And the main perk you want to have for this is the Bane Switch perk, which offers players a 35% damage buff once active. Now I've mentioned this before in my last video, but the Bane Switch perk is actually pretty powerful on primary weapons as they can eat through the health in a matter of seconds, and they are also great for boss DPS. Although it's stasis, it will still benefit from the Radiant buff from our subclass once active, so as long as you net those kills via your Sunbracers, this weapon will be a big powerhouse in end game. For secondary, we have the Ogma PR6 Pulse Rifle with Adaptive Munitions and Wellspring, a great solar weapon that's going to be fantastic for end game content and for anyone who just wants a simple and ease of use weapon. Not a lot of perks will be needed for this build, but ideally having a weapon with Wellspring available can help in the meme run of things. At the same time, as a solar, we can add on for the Might mod to increase its damage further, as its Adaptive Munition perk and co will make taking down shields a lot more easier. It's definitely worth grinding for as you play through the seasons, but if not, then you can always opt in to return it to the Callus Mini tool with its beneficial Origin Trait perk. For Heavy, I've chosen you the Gallahorn as it's still quite a monster to use in end game. With how the plays are being done, using Gallo would be useful in terms of procking bait and switch easily with his two and two rockets. At the same time, you can always go with Machine Gun if you want more ammo and slightly higher damage per DBS. Alternatively, Palamide B with Explosive Light is also great as the build will be creating a ton of orbs of power in the process. Now onto stats, and as mentioned your main focus will be a discipline strength as these two in hand will be doing the work. Now on the basis of the build, for us to get near infinite grenades being spammed, your strength stat needs to be the highest stat out of everything else and have the most amount of mods given for it so it can do its job. Now that was the case for the last version we did, as the subclass back then worked differently. 
In our case now, we have some very strong aspects and fragments available that don't require us to heavily mod the sunblazers to be more active. As an example, my strength is at 70 and this is fine enough to reach. I have one momentum transfer mod available this time round, as the heat rises aspect will allow us to get mini energy back while in the air, so no double mods are needed this time round. We also have heavy handed and outreach, and heavy handed is going to be the one mod that always allows us to have our mini back at 4 no matter what. Once I collect the well and transfer that into charge with light, every time I use my mini I'll get back half of it again, and as well as what we created via solo grenade, you have infinite loop that is pretty hard to break. In simple terms, you don't need to worry about your strength stats so much, unless you mess up the loop or you get yourself into a situation to where you use your melee and then you can't really recover from there. Since this is really the main key mod that is required to make the sun braces and everything else lethal, the rest of the stats can be mobilized how you see fit. I would propose you add on some points into intellect and slap on the ashes that has mod that will allow you to get your super energy out quickly. At the same time, if you're using Callus Mini Tool, you can gain some benefits from kills with said weapon if your super is full. Another choice you can do is swap out the Ordnance mod for Melee Wellmaker instead, but do look into this first as, like I mentioned, this ability is strong but not super strong against all combatants you face, even against some Red Barker battles are pretty tough to use this melee mod on. At left over wide, we have Kinetic Siphon for creating orbs of power via Kinetic Weapons, and Harmonic Siphon which allows us to create orbs of power via matching elemental weapons. Lastly, we have Rocket Launcher Scavenger for increased rocket reserves. Now, as we have this bit covered, here are the mods all compiled into a quick list for your viewing. For Head, we have Strength, Harmonic Siphon, Kinetic Siphon, and Bound for mod. Arm, we have Strength, Fastball, Momentum Transfer, and Elemental Orders mod. Chest, we have Strength, Arm of the Undying Sun, Concussive Dampner, and Well of Life mod. Leg, we have Discipline, Rocket Launcher Scavenger, and Elemental Charge mod. Bond, we have Minor Discipline, Outreach, and Heavy Handed mod. This build absolutely melts, and never in my life did I think that Solar 3.0 would make the Sun Bracers even more better than before. You've got to remember that the exotic is pretty simple to use, but it can be useful in terms of applying heavy DPS via grenades alone. And although solar grenades are still powerful, this season has just made them even more powerful than ever before. With the touch of flames aspects, your solar grenades now create blobs of lava that will do even more damage to combatants alike. What makes this powerful is that with how some braces work, you can fill up a small area up with literally lava everywhere and make the floor a lava game in reality. But it doesn't stop there. With the heavy handed mod, we'll always be guaranteed melee energy back, whether we are on the ground or in the air, so we can proc sun braces, throw tons of grenades everywhere, snap our fingers again, and repeat as many times as you like. And that's it. That's the build. It's pretty straightforward compared to everything else we do, but a new update has allowed the exotic to really shine and add clearing. You can add on front of might for solar weapon damage, or you can add on some warbind cells if you really want to nuke areas. The build allows that, and as long as you snap the right target, you'll be able to pull this off infinitely. Now, the only one downside to such a build, since not a lot of people are mentioning this, is that you can't use your melee against tougher red bar combatants or mages to a buff to proc sun braces at times. Now, anything small like dregs or fouls are fine, but anything slightly higher than that, you'll start to see some problems appear, as the melee alone isn't strong enough to outright kill some of them. Now, weakening a Centaurium, for example, and then use your melee will be fine and do the trick, but this will limit its uses in some endgame content of your pick. Now, it's strong in Legend to Master content, but anything higher than that is where it's gonna struggle a bit more, which is understandable. This overall shouldn't make using the build avoidable whatsoever, it just means you'll need to be more careful how you use it. Still, once you proc it in any activity, you can just melt your problems away and swim in the lovely pool of lava. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you did that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, I'll see you on the next one.